This video will basically be like how people on a people on like a time constraint might work out. Like we have an hour today. Alora's busy and we got lots of content to do. So it's just like how I would structure, like I need to leave in an hour anyway. I'm just busting balls, but because I need to go somewhere else. So like a lot of you out there, you don't have the you also don't have the ability maybe to be in the gym two, three hours a day like like some certain people do which is that's a fucking that'd be fantastic if i could do that as well but like a lot of us like we're on we're on time constraints right so you got to get that workout in over your lunch or you got to get it in before work or right after work because you got to pick up your kids or whatever it might be get home and deal with real life right so this is just kind of something like this is a extra this is a workout where like i'll do a lot of supersets a lot of triceps just because I'm trying to get that stress and that accumulation of volume in over a shorter period of time. So I'm trying to pack it all into here as opposed to like giving myself this much range to play with that I can maybe do super sets, like a regular set, triple set, I can spread things out and take my time. So here we'll kind of be moving, 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 getting blood in there as fast as we can. Chest workouts with uh, like it's not recommended for everybody. Maybe everyone's doesn't have the issues I might have with warming up and things like that. But my idea is to basically flood, flood this cold chest because I haven't done anything to warm it up. I'm trying to flood it with muscle, with uh, blood by really working the muscle through slower ranges of motion. Like I'm trying to do fuller range. I'm trying to focus more on flexing through stuff as, I, as opposed to like later on, I might get more into shoving and working on an open pec. So I'm trying to like, fill this area with blood and fluid in my joints to get things moving right so i want to recruit blood and then try to get into more of the meat of the workout so a lot of people not a lot of people have this machine in their gym obviously but the easiest thing is when something starts too far back like a lot of people start these arms too far back so when they take off and they start their their fly motion on a machine it almost feels like you're being pulled this way I don't, guys want to think, guys think, oh, this is like a great stretch. I'm super stretched out. It's like, no, that's a little, a little much, right? So what we want to do, especially on a machine like this, because we have this down bar, this bar that's moving parallel to my forearm. I want to put more pressure on that down bar than I want to put on these top handles. So I'm right in the corner and I'm pushing down through that lower bar to keep myself high and my chest engaged. So I'm just squeezing into my lower pec like a most, like a most muscular. And I'm staying up tall, so my chest stays forward a bit, and I just bring my hands around. So my hands and my elbows open my pec, and I drive through. So it's more of a controlled squeeze and drive through my palm than it is me coming around, where a lot of guys are doing this, like, just trying to clank it, right? Because they always want to bang these two together for some unknown reason. Yeah, so a lot of people will be, we want to get underneath the handles here and tuck into lat. So I'm trying to get a little more upper here because everything else has kind of been lower and mid. So I'm gonna rise out of this position slow and I'm gonna flex up to a controlled squeeze up in my top of my neck. So I'm trying to hit across my upper pec by dropping in and then flexing around. So my motion isn't necessarily me pushing out. My motion is I'm coming underneath the bar but I'm almost coming around. So I'm trying to flex my pec in this manner and I'm pushing out. But to everyone, it looks like I'm just pushing up. But in order to get this to grab up here when I fall away, I have to kind of move across the press, right? So I'm trying to create getting that maximum height in the press by going slower out of the depth. And I want to drive, drive my palm and then I want to bury my head and squeeze out through. So I'm almost overextending on this way more than I would on a regular press. So I'm just rocking up through. And I'm physically lifting my rib cage and pec and squeezing them together. So I'm always trying to drive elbows together through the press. To try and get that upper pec. A lot of guys make the mistake here of shoving. Like bouncing in this range because they think that it's pulling down into the pec. But it's like if you really slow an incline press down, you'll notice you'll get more pec because you're, gonna, you're still keeping the shoulder out of it on the way up as opposed to muscling right away. So I'm trying to keep my shoulder out, 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 and then flex my pec across, right? So it's like people, guys find their spot where they're locked on their pec. 
And then I want to move from the stagnant position. But I want to literally rock out, move. So I'm falling like an inch back from my sticking point to get that inertia to squeeze through so that I can lift, stay up through my press so I don't start doing this. I'm literally driving up through. So my hands are never going to touch. It's all about when you think about flies and things like that, it's about how much contraction I get in my pec. I don't care about the distance my hand travels. Whereas on this, we're trying to get distance because we're trying to get full extension because I can't, I can't flex outer pec, I mean upper pec and upper chest. I can't flex the shelf if I only extend to here. I can catch it, but I have to move across my pec. I have to move my hand through and flex into my upper pec here in order to grab it, right? Because the higher my hand is, the more I'm gonna get up in here before it becomes shoulder, right? So we're just trying to mimic this motion as like an over, over exaggerated flex, I guess you could say. Almost treating it like a fly, even though it's a press. So I wanna maintain tempo slowed to here and then squeeze up through. You can almost see my shoulders leave the bench. So they're back behind. Then I push palm and I overextend. Then I set shoulders down in catch again. And flex through palm. So my head's always buried, chin always down. So my chest is forced to stay up. If I did it like this, I won't get shit. It'll be too hard. I have to be pinned, I have to be down fire up through all palm no shoulder up through the head position plays like a massive a massive part in development of chest right so a lot of guys have good movement on chest and you'll see there there's lots of movement through the rib cage but you'll see that their head never leaves this plane so it's just things moving around the head as you can see i'm moving around my head and so that's why when we tell people to move their head back, it's like I'm trying to get into this position. I'm trying to create this lock down on my posterior chain. I'm trying to be locked down in that range and push here. But I don't want to stay here because if I stay here and I press, as the bar comes down, this rolls forward. So I want to flex into my upper back and I want to drive back to that position again. So I want to use the strength of my upper back and my lats to control weight as it comes at me. Then I want to fire through by driving through palm, squeezing pec and pushing chin and head back, right? I don't know, probably a fly. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm biased uh, machine. I hate dumbbell flies. Just conditioned to not like them because of my shoulder, right? But even when, I, even when I could do them, I never really, I never really got much from them. I got a good squeeze at the top, kind of like we had on that machine prior, but it just was like feeling like deep impingement in my shoulder it's like why am i why am i fucking doing this yeah and because you're coming through on i'm coming through a round i'm scooping up peck as opposed to like falling back and squeezing peck which is fine but i feel like i can recruit more overall peck here right and you can also turn machine machine flies into like more machine presses so you can get a pressing motion out of a fly you don't have to always just be flying because of the angle of the machine like you can, I'll do it. We'll pull in and we'll come around more on like a little tighter kind of press fly, right? Why is it, why is it wet? Antoine. It's gonna keep going. Antoine. <laughs> so what I was talking about before with the, you can do a lot of variations on this where guys are wide open and they're swinging around. I'm coming up here, but on this, you can also pin in so I can drop my elbows down into my lat and I can be in more of a press motion so that when I come around, it's just this tight squeeze, right? So I'm still doing the same motion. I'm still lifting up and keeping shoulders back, but I'm literally catching elbow and I'm pushing hands out. So I'm pinching in, pushing out. So I'm just shortening the range and getting deeper into that mid chest because I can squeeze into there and pushing through. So it forces me to keep my rib cage up because if I don't keep my rib cage up and I try and do this, it'll be like this. I'll have to I'll curl over. So I have to push from underneath and drive through my rib. Up, through. So a lot of guys, once they get in here, the, the best way to start this 
a lot of people are going to want to do this and start it out here because this weight, this is H angled and it's a way to set yourself and then have that weight come at you and push it away. But ideally you want to be able to slide under through the weight and catch. So I'm tucked into my lap, my elbows tucked into my lap and I'm up tall, keeping massive, like tall posture and I'm driving. So I'm not going to come to depth that takes me out of that. I'm going to come like this as a barbell across my chest, tap my chest and fire out, move away from my press. Keep those shoulders down, push those hands away, up through. Lift chest, squeeze. We're doing again like a, well, we started over there, press, fly, press. Now today we're, and then on this we started fly, press, press, right? We're just incorporating different movements for different areas. That in tight, kind of press fly neck deck is going to grab more lower mid because we're up so tall above it. We're just flexing into here. That's way more of like a mid peck, mid to low peck because I'm driving up through and I'm squeezing across mid peck. Here we're going to try and do the same thing we did over there with the incline. So this might be too low. So we're not going to take it super heavy. We're just going to be here. Oh, who is in this last? Monsters. But convinced people don't know their height. So I'm going to feel this pull down in my head's up right now. So I can't be pinned back here. It's going to fuck up my shoulder, right? So I'm going to be leaning on my hands, basically chest up. When I go to move it slow out of the hole and driving my head back and flexing up around. So I'm going to end up over my eyes, but I start in my armpits. So the arcing of the machine is going to allow me to squeeze up deeper into my pec. As long as I keep it on my palm and drive slow. So I'm trying to squeeze, 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 chin down, relax. Everything's up to a flex, squeeze. I mean, I'm kind of like, like, I wouldn't ideally want to just train in an hour, but like, like I said, it's most people, some people don't have a choice. Like that's all you're allotted for that day. Cause you have so much stuff going on. Ideally I'd want to train for like an hour and a half, just so I don't have to like rush myself. And I'll train a little more than an hour cause I'm gonna do cardio after but just to get the video in and do what we're doing. I mean, it's just, also some people don't want to work that, that hard, right? They want to like, and I get that. A lot of people, when they come to the gym, it's almost like therapeutic for them. It's a way to like either unwind from the day and do something they've been looking forward to all day, or it's like, I'm going to start my day with this and start it on a high note. Cause like, if I'm nice and relaxed in the gym, take my time, get a good pump, feel good. The rest of their day is probably hectic, running from here to there, going to work, going to whatever it is, picking up their kids, going out to dinner, you know what I mean? It's, it's that one time of the day where you get to just kind of be in your zone, but I get that. But it's like every once in a while, especially if you feel like your, your workouts are slipping and you're not getting much from it, it's like try and pick up the pace a bit and see if you can do it in a little bit less time, right? The, the duration of the workout and how long it lasts is for you to get in your prescribed amount of work, whatever you decided to do that day, right? So if you can jam that in a shorter window, try it and see what happens. people like undervalue or don't they underestimate like the importance of full extension on a press because they think like oh one they're not rolled back and they're not set in their shoulders or in their back to understand that like my full lockout on my press is here it's not here which is what people think lockout is and the shoulders locked out right so if I can't get my palm from my proper position to extend and squeeze up and lock out I can't send that squeeze to the middle. 
So I just stay outer the whole time. So obviously we know your chest doesn't do this. It doesn't open like an elevator door and close like an elevator door. But in your mind, it's gonna feel like that. There's very few people that feel like the fibers of their chest running horizontally and then diagonally up into their shoulder and armpit, right? You don't feel that pulling and like squeezing down back to where it was. It feels more like an opening off your sternum and a closing. So if we don't ever get this open and then drive through and close it all the way, physically close, flex our chest together, how can we recruit fiber inside? How can we stimulate that if we don't get full extension? So that's what I'm saying. Like, you'll see a shit ton of guys who can do like five plates on this thing. Like three aside, two up here. And they just get themselves pinned back in their upper back because that's what's strong. That's what you need for a good press. And then it's just literally this, like, and as you can see from the side, there's nothing happening with my chest. It's just my shoulders locking out. But if I'm here and I push up through and I roll my chest up high, this is locked out too. So I wanna get chest. I'm not trying to get stronger in my upper back and trap. So I get this happening when, I, when I'm done. And you see a lot of top bodybuilders stuck like this because this overdevelopment of this like upper back trap shoulder combo is forcing them here. So when they go to hit shots, nothing happens. They can't lift their chest because their shoulder does all the work. So they're, just, they're up and they're just, and then they hit, rear, they hit right lats beds and it's just this, like they're just squeezing hard and nothing happens with their chest. They don't have any projection, right? So like just getting people out of that mentality of, of worrying about extending a press, there's a time to rock in the bottom range of a press to really open up that pec. But if you want a full contraction, we have to get full extension. It's like saying I can, I'm only gonna work my bicep like this. I'm never gonna flex and then drop. So you do it on every other body part. Why aren't you doing it on chest? So we did the tucked in. We're here and moving through tight. So for a lot of guys, it's gonna, that's gonna be kind of uncomfortable unless you understand the real movement of it. So we're still catching out here and we're still throwing around. So we're looser. So I'm catching, throwing my hands out. Throwing. I'm not trying to be here and flex because I can't. It's fucking hard to flex through that whole range when a weight's arcing like that. So I'm gonna drive through palm and I'm gonna squeeze my hands together. Up through, up through. So I want that inertia out the back to throw it to the front. Up through. So there's lots of movement in the body to allow the body to move to catch different body parts right if you lock down too slowly on things and you do negatives too slowly on a lot of stuff especially back you're going to lose your connection so kill your momentum drive your palm out don't get here push right away settle push squeeze that back together so pull those arms back squeeze pull back squeeze out push out a lot of guys in girls getting under the suspension that when I'm pulling, pulling back on stuff, I'm literally pulling the bar to me and I'm controlling the tempo with which it's coming at me. So I'm pulling this bar back, squeezing into my back, throwing it away from me. I'm not trying to keep my chest up and keep my chest tense. I'm allowing the back to do what it does. So it squeezes together, lifts my rib cage and my sternum. I get depth in my shoulder. I push my hands out. So that's why you should be very comfortable in the bottom range of a press because I'm flexed as hell here. It's like I'm holding it. It's like I pull the cable in and I'm holding it here. I can hold that cable all day. Now I've pulled the bar in and I don't even have to fight resistance going forward because it's sinking into me. So I'm pushing away and then I'm catching that resistance again, pushing away. This is just a good combo for like hyper isolating your tricep. A lot of guys like want to grow their arms. So they want to do all these compound movements for arms, whether it's like skull crushers or close grip bench, but it's like, why don't we get your arm out moving on its own? Like here, it's one arm getting as deep as possible. No help from the body, right? We're trying to do that here where I'm trying to lock my shoulder forward and my head back. So I don't want to be here pushing. I want to be here and throwing this thing away from my face. Like when I press, so I'm here. So it's going to throw. I can stick out there if I want because my weight's back here. So when I catch, I drip, drive a little up fire back down to the line where I can extend. I can't extend from here. I have to come to here to extend. So I fire 
out through here. We're trying to keep this chin back and throwing out. Don't worry about your speed. Slow out of the out of the bottom, extend, squeeze. So our rep speed picks up as we extend. There. Like a lot of guys, when I'm telling you to like, you're obviously opening up here and then you're driving through on something. So my body weights forward. You have to, from this point, crack elbow. Elbow has to unhinge and hand has to get pushed. I can't make this deep, this deep of a bend happen with tension. So I can't be here, hold tension and go. I'm just like putting way too much strain on my elbow joint in the lower part of my tricep, right? So if I'm here, I'm squeezing off, my body weight's forward, so it just falls behind me. So again, I'm locking into back and trap, flexing off. So I'm catching, counterbalancing that weight off my back, my lat, and my trap, because I'm so close to my body. And it's just shoving my hand back, and I'm extending. But if you try to like really control that negative, it's gonna mess up the whole flow of the lift. It's the same thing here. If I'm locked out and I'm facing this way and my shoulder's out, I'm gonna extend, like we talked about before, I have to break here. This has to fly back. I can't do this. Flex, I have no momentum to come out of that, to come out of the bottom part of the lift, right? So I have to get some slingshot action happening, almost like a flinging and rocking on that muscle. So it can't be this slow fucking creeping death fucking rep of everything where everyone's like feeling every inch of every negative and every inch of every positive like nothing else in sports works like that guys so i don't know why you think it doesn't bodybuilding like natural movement will always be far better than like forced negatives or forced slow motion we talked about this on a video that i did on my channel but when you're starting a tricep extension a lot of people just want to keep this bar in front of them and move here but if you lock into lat, so if I pull towards me and I lock into lat and I set into me. So again, I create this like super mashed down arm, right? Where I'm starting from this position as opposed to like here. So I'm starting stretched in back. So when I go to move, when I, my weight's on the bar, so I'm forward. So when, I, when I'm here, I'm on the weight and I'm falling back. So my hip rises up, rises down. So the movement of my press is controlled by my hip moving up and down. It's not about my upper body shoving the weight down. I'm not trying to stay on top of weight. If anything, I'm trying to keep weight locked on lat and move on lat. So I don't get this happening, right? And when we adjust the grip at the end, it's just to cave elbows in, be up above the bar. So we're not getting as much range and we're flexing it up to that end of that tricep. Just rocking off on that like last range just to burn everything out. Because we started so deep in such a deep stretch, now we're just moving off half ranges, right? Pushing blood in there. And that's it. That's it. Get the hell out of here. Hold on. <laughs>